Hey, wonder hussy here. Not out in the middle of nowhere, unfortunately. No, today I'm right here in the middle of everywhere, <laughs> aka my house in downtown Las Vegas. And well, unfortunately, I'm waiting on some car repairs and my mechanic can't see me for another few days. Uh, long story, but basically I need to get my CV boot replaced uh, before I can do any off-roading. So you know what that means. I'm in pavement purgatory. That's right. For now, I can only explore places that are accessible by paved roads. <laughs> and you know, just as well as I do, that all the really interesting stuff is not on paved roads. It's way out in the desert, in the middle of nowhere, off really rough, bumpy dirt roads. Which I can't take right now. But you know me. I like a challenge. And I did manage to pinpoint to one interesting location we can go check out without doing any off-roading. It's one of those giant concrete navigation arrows that were used by pilots in the days before radar. <laughs> That's right, to help the U.S. airmail pilots get from New York to Los Angeles in the days before radar, the Postal Service actually built giant concrete directional arrows pointing the way across the entire country, all the way from New York to Los Angeles. And I think they built one every five to 10 miles across the entire country. <laughs> now, once radar was invented in the 1930s, the arrows were abandoned and most of them were torn out either to make way for development or in World War II, a lot of them were torn out <laughs> because the government didn't want the Japs to basically have a treasure map pointing the way to all the major population centers in the United States. <laughs> I mean, think about it. You definitely don't want to have your enemy. You don't want to give your enemy a map with arrows pointing to where all your people live. Anyway, there's still a few arrows left out there, uh, mostly out in the West where there's more undeveloped land. And there just happens to be one of them, basically right here in Las Vegas. That's right, there's one of them arrows right here in town. And the good news for me is, you don't have to do any off-roading to get to it. So, let's get in the car and go check it out. here right outside an RV dealership and I think this uh, arrow is at the top of this little hill here uh, it doesn't look like there's a trail so we're just gonna have to bushwhack our way to the top Almost climbed all the way to the top of this dang hill. Well, it looked like a hill from the bottom, but let me tell you something. By the time I hiked all the way up here, it felt more like a mountain. And well, we should be able to see the arrow up here any minute. Okay, I think it's right at the top of this rise. Just a few more steps. Incidentally, if you see someone else in the shot, that's because I had a friend come with me, so. Don't be alarmed, it's not a ghost, a yeti, or a serial killer. Anyway, we're at the top of this. Oh wow, yeah, look, we're at the ridge, or whatever you wanna call it. I guess it's not really, well, it's sort of a ridge. And there's some metal, well, it's like the remains of an old wind sock and some other metal thing. So I think we must be there. <laughs> oh wow, yeah, look. Aha! 
There it is! Shut up! <laughs> Wowee! Okay, well, if I seem inordinately excited over a slab of concrete, forgive me, but I don't know. This is just kind of one of those things that I thought, is it really up there? I mean, look, let me, for reference, let me just show you where we are. Okay, so obviously we're on top of this hill or whatever you want to call it. It's the south edge of Vegas, very far southern end of town. Uh, kind of like out in the desert. You can see, if you're familiar with Vegas, there's the M Resort. And then there in the distance is uh, Las Vegas proper, the city itself, the Strip. There's where the uh, suburban growth has metastasized out into the desert. And look at that, there's I-15 coming into town from LA. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've driven on that freeway myself past this very hill and never thought anything of it. And I certainly didn't realize there was a historical artifact perched atop it. Okay, anyway, this might not look like an arrow, but I did scout it on Google Earth prior to coming out here, and this is just the base of it. There's actually a pointy part up here. If you follow, this is like the base of the arrow. And then the pointing part <laughs> is over here, look. <laughs> uh, uh, pointing right off towards the airport. Now, I should note that back in the 20s, uh, 20s and early 30s, when these errors were being used, the Las Vegas airport was in a different location, okay? If you've ever flown into Vegas, you flew into McCarran Airport, almost certainly. That's the big commercial airport here in town. And it's, well, it's more or less in the same direction, but the airport back in the 20s was at a different place. It was actually out back from where, uh, behind where the, the Sahara Hotel is nowadays on the corner of Sahara Avenue and Paradise. That's where the old airport was. And so that's where these arrows were pointing at the old airfield, which gosh, I just blanked out on what the name of the original airport was called, but it wasn't McCarran, it was something else. But anyway, that's where it's pointing. <laughs> right out towards the old airfield at the corner of Sahara and Paradise. And then this, I mean, I don't know why, I don't know if this is the, I don't think this windsock has anything to do with the original arrow but you never know might as well go check it out since we're up here anyway <laughs> oh it looks like there's a camera on it we might be on tv oh i don't know that that looks like it's been busted for a long time never mind but you can see there was some kind of windsock on it at one time and then this over here well, I'm not sure what that was, but if anyone watching knows, let us know in the comments. <laughs> Man, this is wild. I mean, it's wild just to think about these old timey pilots. I think I was reading online that they were uh, actually in open cockpit airplanes back then. Like they weren't even closed in. So they were just leaning over the edge, looking for these arrows to find their way across, well, across the USA. Isn't that nuts? And then apparently at night, because obviously they wouldn't be able to see these arrows at night, even though uh, I should note, or I think I did note, that these arrows were painted yellow back when they were in use to help them stand out from the rest of the desert more. I mean, because if you look at this concrete, this gray concrete, it really doesn't stand out that much from the rest of the landscape. So I guess, oh, you can even kind of see here, look. Look, you can even kind of see there's like a little bit of yellow paint left over. See that? From back in the, wait, that's like from almost a hundred years ago. Look, over here too, a little bit of yellow paint left. That's pretty neat. It's a living relic of the past. I think those, I'm not sure about this, but those metal poles that are left standing out there, well, I know they used to have uh, light, light beacons as well, because obviously a bright yellow arrow would only be of use to a pilot during the day when he could see it. But what about when they were trying to fly at night, you know? I guess from what I was reading online, when they first started the airmail service, they couldn't fly at night, so they'd have to stop and put the, the mail into a train and carry it by train at night. And when they finally built this whole system of yellow arrows for the day and then these lighted beacons at night, I think it was able to cut like two days off the time it took to send a letter coast to coast. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on that, don't quote me on it, but I read something like that online. But so these metal brackets might have had something to do with the light beacon that used to be up here. I mean, there's one, two, three, 
four of them, like four little legs of a tower. I'll bet you anything there was a metal tower rising up and it's right in the middle of the two parts of the arrow. We're standing on the tail and there's the nose of the arrow or whatever you want to call the pointy part. So this tower was in the middle and that was probably the part that lit up. Who knows how tall it was, but it went right up here and it lit the way so the pilots could see at night. Now, unfortunately, all the light beacon towers were dismantled during World War II because they needed all the scrap metal they could get back in those days for the war effort. So remember, they put these arrows up every five to 10 miles across the entire USA from New York to Los Angeles and along secondary routes, okay? The New York to LA, I think it went New York to San Francisco and it more or less periled I-80. But then there were these other little spurs, like there was LA to Vegas and Vegas to Salt Lake or whatever. They had all these different little spur routes. So every five to 10 miles on the main route, plus all these little spur routes, that was a lot of scrap metal and these beacons. And well, they took almost all of them down for the war effort. I think I read online that there's still some of them left operational in uh, Montana. I guess it's still so dark and remote up in certain parts of Montana that even radar doesn't work and they still have to use these lighted beacons. I'm not really sure. All I know is, I think it's pretty dang cool that in a city like Vegas, where we blow everything up the minute it turns five years old and you know tear it down, make way for the new, that <laughs> you can actually drive and take a little short hike up to something that's almost a hundred years old and still standing here today, basically, right in the middle of town. I mean, yeah, technically we're not in the middle of town because like I said, that's the strip, which is actually Clark County. That's not even part of the city of Las Vegas. The city of Vegas is behind that. Downtown is technically the city. But all this sprawl over the intervening, oh gosh, what, 90, 80 years since this era was built. If you look at it, like I was saying earlier, the city has basically metastasized almost out to this arrow. You can see here's the literal edge of town. <laughs> Some developer decided to squeeze a bunch of houses into this little tiny depression <laughs> between all these mountains. I mean, you can even see like how they cut the mountains away around to like jam more houses in. When meanwhile, if you just would have gone over here on the other side of the hill, <laughs> there's like nothing but miles and miles and miles of open desert. So you tell me why these houses had to be jammed in on that side of the highway instead of just building them over here where everyone could have had more than a postage stamp sized backyard. You know, like, oh, I'll be honest with you. I'm kind of a snob when it comes to these new housing developments because I think, I mean, I don't know. I'm sure they're nice houses for what they are, but golly, I'm just going to go ahead and zoom in. Why on earth would you want to be jammed in cheek to jowl with all your neighbors like that? We have no friggin' privacy at all. You know, me personally, I'd much rather be like there's, I mean, you can obviously see there's a few little lonely ranches out here, or they used to be lonely ranches. Little bits of private property surrounded by open desert. I'd way rather be like one of those guys. But I hate to say it, until uh, Lake Mead runs dry, <laughs> there's gonna be a lot more development here. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if these poor ranches out here end up getting surrounded by development and jammed in just as cheek to jowl as these guys over here are. Okay, anyway, enough predicting the future. Uh, I brought my drone with me because I thought it might be interesting to, to launch my drone and try to get an overhead shot of this arrow and see how it would have looked to the pilots. Uh, unfortunately, it's kind of windy up here and I have like a little DJI Mavic Mini and if there's any wind at all, it's really hard to operate, but it's not super windy, so I'm gonna try it.
<laughs> hey, that was pretty cool. Okay, I'll admit I'm not the greatest drone operator in the world, as evidenced by my landing in that bush. <laughs> but it was cool, even though I wasn't able to fly very high, it was cool just to be able to see what this thing looked like from the air, as it must have looked to one of them brave US airmail pilots way back in the 1920s. <sighs> Can you imagine? Anyway, hope you enjoyed this little trip out to this weird landmark in Vegas. And before I wrap up this video, there's one thing I want to say, and that is, okay, I'm not saying exactly where this is, but it's pretty easy to figure it out by watching this video. So if you do decide to uh, use this video as a resource to hike up here and check out this area for yourself, please just don't vandalize it. There's no graffiti on it. There's really no garbage up here at all, no litter. Let's keep it that way. Like I said earlier in the video, there's really not a lot of, uh, well, there's not a lot of hundred year old stuff sitting around Vegas anymore. And so, well, let's protect one of the few relics we still have. Anyway, I'm gonna hike on back down, get in my car and go home now. I'll see you at the next unusual location that can be reached by pavement until I get out of this dang pavement purgatory. Wah, wah, wah.